You are watching ESPN Crick Info Match Day brought to you by Maruti Suzuki. It's been an engrossing day of test cricket. We had a total of five wickets to fall. Four times the batsmen were hit on the gloves and then you had three times the batsmen were hit on the helmet. Here is the scorecard. India 443 for seven declared. Remember, you had Rohit Sharma not out for 63 at the time. The only centurion of the day was Cheteshwar Pujara. Australia have come out to bat 8 for no loss in 6 overs. Joining me, VVS Lakshman and Brad Hodge. As always, VVS, we ask you to give ratings from 1 to 10. Here are your questions. India's declaration timing? Uh, 6. Brad? Uh, 3. Mm. Rohit Sharma's innings? 7. Brad? Yeah, 8. Okay. Australia's fielding? Oh, two. <laughs> two. <laughs> two for the two drop catches, I'm guessing. Okay, Brad. Uh, fielding good, uh, catching uh, one. <laughs> ah, smart. Okay, the MCG pitch. Uh, again, three. Brad. Okay, no worries. I think five. Let's uh, wait to see at the end of the uh, five days before ah, we make that, judgment, I guess. Yeah, uh, that's a Victorian uh, talking. Yeah. It's a pitch that he's played a lot of cricket on. Okay, <laughs> likeliness of getting a result. Uh, eight. Brad? Uh, five. Five. Okay, interesting points there from the two experts. Now we'll get into the details. Let's now start with the Indian bowling, whatever little we saw of them. Let's start with Jaspreet Bumrah. You were talking about how maybe stump to stump line, maybe the thing to do here. He's doing exactly Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And not only on this wicket, that's by default uh, the length uh, Jaspreet Bumrah bowls and also the line Jaspreet Bumrah bowls. In the majority of times, he makes sure that the batsman plays a lot of deliveries and that's why it's so effective because the more number of balls you bowl uh, and make the batsman play you got more chances of uh, getting the wicket mm. and in that you know few overs India bowl mm. every ball mm. looked as if you're going to get a wicket yeah. not even once did both the Australian open openers look comfortable and that's where I felt that we should have bowled at least 15 overs and mm. made sure that probably you got two wickets because if you ask any opener the toughest period is at the end of a day's play. Mm. They have fielded for one and a half days, more than one and a half days. Mm. Tired legs, not fully focusing or concentration will yeah. not be 100%. That was a perfect time for Team India to have picked up two wickets. Okay. Uh the Indian team could have declared a bit earlier or not. Uh, that is something that we'll discuss at length. For the moment, let's quickly take a look at the line and the length that the Indian bowlers were bowling. Uh, we'll start with the line first. Was it very different from how the Australian bowlers were bowling? Let's see. Outside the off stump, 47%. Uh, you would expect that to pick a wicket. But it's on the stump. And this is what we were talking to VVS. 47% there. So I'm guessing they've gauged the pitch rather well. Let's also take a look at the lengths that the Indian bowlers uh, uh, got. Was it different? Remember, we were talking short of Good length, maybe the right way to go here. They've got that eight balls there. Remember, it's a very, very small sample size. Good length, 17 also because I'm guessing because of the variable, variable bounce that you have on this pitch, that may be a good length to bowl. The good length area, 17 balls that you've got Indian bowlers bowling there. Brad, let me put this question to you. I know the sample size is very small because India have only managed to bowl, what, six overs. But in that time that you've seen the Indian bowlers, are they looking slightly more threatening than the Australians? Yeah, definitely. But um, yeah, I think now is a better time to bowl than at the start of the match. Uh, oh, yeah, you'll find yeah, batting very yeah. difficult and scoring square of the wicket. Oh. You know, any sort of wind that offer will, will will yield runs. So I think that the uh, the Indians have done their homework. They know that if they're going to challenge the stumps as long as they possibly can, then they'll reap rewards. And Virat will set fields accordingly. That scoring will be difficult. So yeah, really they will be dangerous for sure on this wicket, the Indian bowlers. Okay, we're going to assess Virat's captaincy as this inning progresses. For the moment, one smart move there, bringing in Ravindra Jadeja to quickly sneak in an over. Yeah, I think a uh, wonderful move. You know, and we know that Ravindra Jadeja finishes his over. Uh, 30 probably, seconds? Yeah, <laughs> one minute uh, usually and he bowls yeah. at a rapid pace. Yeah. I think it was a good move because you would get one more over from the fast bowler. You know, and that is where I still feel that you know India missed a trick. You know, 15 mm -hmm. overs if they have bowled uh, yeah. tonight, yeah. I think the amount of pressure it would have created on the Australian batsmen and in the dressing yeah. room yeah. would have been really, really uh, good. Yeah. You know, and that's where I felt the opportunity of picking up two wickets. Yeah 
was very, very important. Okay, I'll get into the declaration a little later. For the moment, you thought maybe Shami could have been given that final over. You had the chance just to give all the bowlers a uh, bit of... No, uh, I think because know? both Ishan and Bumrah started off, you know, you wanted a bowler who was warmed up. Okay. You don't want someone who is not warmed up and you know will not create that impact in the first over. And Shami okay. is someone who doesn't start off well mm. and his second and third over is when slowly he'll get his rhythm. Mm. So I think it, it was a good move to have someone who is creating that impact and who is already bowled uh, than someone who hasn't bowled uh, over as yet. Okay, plenty of questions coming on YouTube as well as Facebook. I'll try and take uh, a lot of them. For the moment, we'll take a question from Facebook that we've got uh, for VVS Lakshman. And uh, this is Rohan Shukla. Given the variable bounce in the pitch, how threatening will Jadeja be tomorrow? And what should be his plan to the Australian batsman? I think uh, two things. You know, if Jadeja is just looking to restrict the flow of runs, that's not the right approach. You know, Jadeja should be looking to take wickets. Okay. And the only way he can take wickets is by varying his pace and also flighting the ball which which is something which will be a challenge for Jadeja because that's not his style of bowling but one thing which Jadeja will definitely enjoy on this wicket is the pace of the wicket because the wall is not really coming onto the bat the ball will start gripping as the match progresses and we know how consistent Jadeja can be with his line and length you know so I think the two challenges for Jadeja and two opportunities for Jadeja is to restrict the flow of runs but also look to take wickets you know he has to bowl with that kind of uh, uh, mindset. Look to take wickets, pick up wickets and that's the way uh, he can help this Indian bowling lineup. because we have to also remember that we are playing only with four bowlers. Mm. So you want contribution from all the four bowlers. Mm. Jadeja, if he can control the flow of runs, mm. he'll also give an opportunity for Virat Kohli to rotate the fast bowlers. Okay, a quick word on Australian batting that we've seen up until now. Brad, to you, uh, that ball that got uh, Harris on the helmet, we saw this happening in the previous test match as well with him. Do you think it's a problem with him or just the track, the way it is, you really can't do much? Uh, we also saw this with Hanuma Vihari get hit on the helmet. Yeah, I think it's the track, you know, just for now. We're, um, you know, it's just a surprise ball. The good sh if you could short pitch from anyone, it's very important. So. Uh, Marcus Harris has played the MCG for three years, so he knows how the bounce is, he knows how to judge the particular bowling. But uh, I think what we've seen is the Indians have possessed a good short pitch delivery in all, all their fast yeah. bowlers. Ishan, Bumrah and also uh, Shami deliver a very good short pitch bowling. And we'll see a lot of it, I reckon, later on in this test match. Mm. Brad, we heard from VVS about India's declaration. He thought maybe 15 overs is what India should have targeted to bowl. Uh, would you would you also rather have India bowl uh, a bit earlier than they did? Yeah, definitely. I think that um, any opening batsman doesn't want to get out there, you know, when you especially be in the field for two days. Uh, look, I don't think it's just about runs. I think India had enough runs. And I, I would have thought even an hour, an hour and a half, they should have had a crack at them, uh, you know, Traditionally, they've taken their time and um, unfortunately, we'll just have to wait and see how this test match pans out and whether they've missed a trick. You get a side two or three down overnight when you're tired, you've been in the field all day. That's that's pots of gold. Um, but now that the opening batsman will get, uh, you know, good sleep, get some rest uh, and come out fresh. And, and, you know, if Australia back for a day and a half, then the yeah, game's finished. Yeah, I think it's also about, I've got some stats, you know, yeah. because the third new ball was available. You know, so as a batsman, you're looking to capitalize on the old ball, 70 overs old, yeah, and the spinners were bowling, and Aaron Finch, who's a part-timer, was bowling, and uh, India scored only 31 runs of the last 10 overs before the new ball was taken. And the moment the new ball was taken, after four overs, India declared. So if there was a clear plan that this evening they're going to bowl, then I think the acceleration should have happened when the spinners were bowling. You know, yeah. and especially yeah. when Pant was batting against Nathan Lyon and. Uh, Aaron Finch, he just yeah. got 25% uh, strike rate against Nathan Lyon and 60% uh, strike rate against yeah. Aaron Finch. You would expect Pant to be more aggressive. Yeah. Uh, the situation yeah. demanded him to be more aggressive, which would have uh, given an opportunity to in for India to have declared once they reached uh, the target of 450 runs. You know? okay. So I just felt that they didn't accelerate or they didn't right. show that intent in the 10 overs before the new ball okay. was taken. Okay, I'll get to that since you're talking about declaration. Plenty of questions coming uh, about the Indian team's uh, declaration. But, uh, you know, Brad was also talking about rest to Australian batsmen. I'm thinking the one who really deserves rest is Pat Cummins. Mm. First, you get him to bowl 30 overs, then get him to pad up and sit there as a night watchman. Expect him to bat as well. So, uh, thankfully for him, he hasn't had to come out and bat for the moment. We've got a question from YouTube now on the Indian team's declaration and this is Parag. Uh, should India have looked to score 500 plus and bowl out Australia twice? Now that's that's a thought. Let, let Brad answer this. 
Well, they couldn't have. Uh, you can't bat into the third day. I think that um, one of the things which you know we've seen from all the viewers is that the uh, the run rate that India have gone about this, you know, it's hard to score. But you know, I think that from a dominant position, that could have been harder and had think, it easily yeah, a session think, at Australia. They yeah. could have scored 400, 450. Brad, I'll come back to you a little later. I think we're having trouble with his line, but I, I'll uh, put that question to you. I think, you know, what the Parag wants to really say here is that because of the way the pitch is, it's going to be really tough to even bat now in the third inning. So probably bat as much as you can and hope to get them out. Twice. Yeah, but also it's important to realize that there are only X number of overs, you know, yeah. and while the wicket is playing up and down, it's going to be tough for batting, but it's also not a wicket where you can run through a side. You know, if the batsman applies himself and looks to occupy the crease, I think we have seen uh, with the way the Indian batsmen were playing against quality fast bowlers that it's not very easy to take wickets. So I think keeping that in mind, the Indian camp must have had a uh, clear uh, thought out process that uh, they are going to bowl this evening, try to get two wickets. You know, so 450 or 500 doesn't really matter, but taking those two wickets in the evening okay. would have mattered. You know, because tomorrow morning, uh, on the third day morning, new batsmen, both the openers or one of the opener out in, in the dressing room, I think it would have created that pressure on the middle order batsmen. Since you talk about the strike rate of Rishabh Pant, mm. you would have liked him to accelerate at the moment. Uh, but Rohit Sharma, similar, I'm looking at the strike rate. Pant at yeah. what, 51, Rohit Sharma 56. Were you happy with Rohit's strike rate then? Yeah, because one of the reasons why Rohit Sharma's strike rate was less is because of the way he started off. You know, mm. when he was having that partnership with Ajinkya Rane, yeah. India lost two set batsmen and Ajinkya Rane and Rohit were new at the wicket. While Ajinkya Rane was batting well, mm. it was important to stitch a partnership because India couldn't afford to lose one more wicket there. And we also discussed during the tea break that Rohit was not able to find his rhythm, was not able to time the ball. It was tough for a new batsman to come and accelerate against the quality fast bowlers uh, and the discipline which the uh, Australian fast bowlers were showing. But there were two uh, types of Rohit Sharma's innings. You know, one before uh, uh, the, the catch was dropped by Siddhal and after the catch was dropped by Siddhal. After the catch was dropped, I thought Rohit Sharma was more free-flowing than what it was before. Mm -hmm. So I think once Rishabh Pant joined Rohit Sharma, mm -hmm. I think the strike rate of Rohit Sharma kept getting better. Mm -hmm. You know, but it was about not accelerating or not taking uh, the spinners apart. You know, which was ideal scenario, keeping in mind that the third new ball was available and keeping in mind that it was only 14 or 15 overs before they decided to declare. Okay, plenty of Rohit Sharma fans mm. are watching us right now on YouTube and Facebook. I can see the comments coming in and uh, some of them are of the opinion that, uh, you know, you should allow him to bat. Uh, getting a test match 100 was a possibility for someone who's struggling to find yeah. a spot in a test team. Could something like that happen? No, I think that? you don't think uh, in this fashion, you know, when you're playing a test match cricket, until unless a batsman is close to his 100, you know, which is say mm. between 85, you know, 10, 15 runs okay. away from his 100, then probably you know that in three, four overs, you give, him, give the batsman an opportunity to get to the uh, three-figure mark, you know. But Rohit Sharma was way away from uh, the three-figure mark, you know. But it, what was important was for Team India to put pressure on the Australian openers and pick up two wickets, you know. As the day was nearing the end, it, that was the thought process uh, okay. in the Indian camp. Okay, let's take another question. Uh, since we're talking about Rohit Sharma, we've got another question on Rohit Sharma. I'll put that question uh, to VVS Lakshman. This has come from uh, YouTube. Uh, Sudhanvana wants to know, uh, was Rohit Sharma's knock actually impressive or was it just the tiredness of the bowlers that allowed easy runs? I, I believe we've got Brad back with yeah. us. Brad, uh, if you've seen this question, I'd like you to answer this, please. Well, you can only bat to the situation, can't you? And uh -huh. Rohit Sharma came in at a good time to bat. And uh, he did his role. I mean, uh, you can't ask for him. He's been waiting okay. to bat for, for a day. Okay, um, we still we role. still don't have a great line with Brad. Uh, we unfortunately can't hear him very clearly. I think it was impressive, you know, because uh, we discussed again during the tea break that uh -huh. It's a no-win situation for Rohit Sharma, you know, who's not been a consistent member of this test team. Mm. A tough wicket for a new batsman to come in and accelerate or score runs uh, freely. And this wicket doesn't really suit Rohit Sharma's style of batting. Mm. But what I really like was he applied himself yeah. while yeah, he got a chance when uh, Peter Siddle dropped him of Nathan Lyon. But I think it's, it's very important to give credit to Rohit Sharma that he converted this start into a half century. And it was yeah. very important for one of the batsmen to stay till the end. You know, so credit to him. Uh, and I'm sure that this will help him 
uh, to gain more confidence because he's a talented batsman. He's got a lot of potential to also perform in Test match cricket. Uh, so I think it was an impressive knock uh, from Rohit Sharma. Okay, as Brad mentioned, that you can only bat to the yes. situation. One thing that happened with Rohit when he was on 15, that catch was dropped. Uh, Siddle dropped that uh, catch for someone who was a fantastic fielder like yourself. You can drop such catches. You have the experience. Oh, I had, I had a lot of experience. <laughs> I can never ever forget the catch I dropped yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, of the bowling of, I think, Ajit Agarkar it was yeah. at Eddingley. You know, and more funny was my reaction after dropping yeah. such a simple catch in slips. You know, so I think uh, you expect uh, Siddle uh, uh, to take that catch. But yeah. when you saw that uh, uh, missed chance, the position he was, you know, there was no balance, there was no base created and that's why I think uh, he, he, he didn't uh, succeed in taking that catch. But it was a costly reprieve because if in Australia would have got uh, Rohit Sharma out then, then it would have forced India to probably, uh, you know, uh, they wouldn't have got to 434, you know, and probably not even uh, declared in the end. You know, so it was a costly lapse there. You know, and immediately after that delivery, yeah. uh, Ajinkya Rahane was dropped by the short leg field. I think it was yes. Travis said. Yes. You know, two consecutive deliveries of uh, Nathan Lyon. Uh, both the Indian batsmen got reprieve. Nathan Lyon's reaction after that was yeah. very similar to your reaction <laughs> when you dropped that catch uh, because you know the man has been bowling his heart out. Uh, there's no wicket for him to show at that moment. Uh, two very close chances went by. Australia couldn't make most of it. Okay, let's take a look at Rohit Sharma's wagon wheel. Where is it that he got those 63 runs? Uh, covers again is one area that he's always strong. 17 runs is where he got. Uh, but my question to you is, you know, 63 not out. What does this do to the team composition? Keeping in mind Hanuma Vihari now, you know, he you got him to open. Yeah. Now Rohit's got runs here. What do you do when a regular opener? Yeah, comes I think back? It, it goes without saying that it will be tough for Hanuma Vihari. You know, until and unless he scores a uh, hmm. uh, hundred uh, in, in the, either in the second innings or in the in the last Test match at SCG. Hmm. Because if Prithvi Shaw comes back, mm. automatically he'll be drafted into the playing eleven as as a regular opener. And we don't know because the next Test series mm. is seven or eight months. It's going to happen in the month of uh, September, October. Yeah, yeah. We never know how things will pan out. But it will be tough for someone like Anuma Vihari, especially after Rohit Sharma gets a half century uh, to to just. Uh, remove Rohit Sharma from that spot, I think it will be tough. And that's what we discussed even yeah. yesterday. Yeah. You know, and why Anuma Vihari should be the scapegoat. You know, when he did well uh, in Perth on challenging uh, wicket, you know, he should have uh, stuck to the middle order slot instead of opening with him. Mm. The chairman of selectors actually said that we'll bring <laughs> him back into the middle order. Let's see if that happens or not yeah. when India play. But it's going to be very, very tough, as you say, looking at the team comp uh, composition. But, you know, it's a good headache to have when you have players scoring run as uh, the yep. Indian players are at the moment. Uh, let's now move on to a player who's been scoring plenty of runs. It's Cheteshwar Pujara. He's already got his second hundred off the tour. I mean, just what, four months ago, it was the England tour, August and he wasn't even played in the first test match. Uh, you think this is his second coming? Really, you know, coming of age of uh, Cheteshwar Pujara? Yeah, especially on overseas tours, you know, because he's been very consistent uh, whenever he is to play in subcontinent condition and his record speaks for itself. But the way he's applied himself and the way he has evolved as a test batsman, number three batsman in overseas condition is really good to see. You know, because it's not only about his concentration, which everyone knows has been his strength, mm -hmm. his mental approach towards each and every innings has been phenomenal. But I think it's also the ability to, uh, you know, to capitalize on the loose deliveries, and whenever the scoring opportunity arises, is is pounced on those opportunities. You know, so I think it's really good. And when you have a number three batsman who is showing that kind of consistency and converting the starts into a, a substantial score, invariably the team will be in a formidable uh, situation or a position. Yeah. And mind you, he scored runs when the team was struggling. If you yeah. remember the Adelaide 100, yeah. you know, Indian team was struggling four wickets down for just 50 odd mm -hmm. runs. And the, the way he went on to score that runs, uh, also the way uh, he shouldered the responsibility of being the frontline batsman when he was playing with the tail, was mm -hmm. instrumental in India winning the test match. Mm -hmm. So it's great to see him flourish. Uh, now even in overseas condition and it's great news for Team India. Interesting you talk about that Adelaide Test match. Uh, if you look at the Indian batting order, there's no doubt that uh you know, the captain Virat Kohli is the leader of the yeah. pack. But would you now see Cheteshwar Pujara leading the way as far as how to bat in these conditions are concerned? You know, instead of everyone trying to emulate Virat Kohli, now you have a situation where everyone, including Virat Kohli, is trying to emulate what Cheteshwar Pujara is. I think, uh, I, I don't think that Virat Kohli is trying to emulate uh, Pujara. Looking at the conditions, or, or the Pujara is trying to emulate uh, Virat Kohli. I think when you're playing at the highest level, everyone should know what they're capable of doing and what their strengths are. And also to assess 
assess and adapt to the conditions and the situation the team is in and that's the hallmark of a great player and both Virat Kohli and Pujara are great players you know and their record uh, speaks for themselves so I think it's all about knowing what is the best approach in that particular situation and how you can counter the opposition bowling lineup on, on, on the conditions you're confronting you know so I think everyone will have their own uh, template own game plan to score runs okay quick word on uh, Virat Kohli we're not uh, accustomed to seeing him miss out on a hundred yeah. especially when he goes past 50 it happened this time uh, yeah. you think it was because he was trying to push the run yeah. rate yeah absolutely you know uh, I, I, there's no doubt in my mind that post lunch the captain Virat Kohli uh, was trying to accelerate and look to declare probably uh, one hour after tea you know and and it was a very unselfish uh, shot and approach from Virat Kohli and that's what something which you expect uh, from from Virat Kohli you know and again he has occupied the crease and that partnership with Pujara was very very instrumental in getting uh, India above 400 runs you know because it's a tough wicket to bat on uh, but again really appreciate that, that kind of uh, approach you know because that's what you expect from a leader you're not only looking at your own personal milestones but you're looking about how you can get your team into a formidable situation where you can put pressure on the opposition and I think uh, the, the game plan of Virat Kohli immediately after lunch showed that he was looking to have that positive intent which probably was missing uh, before uh, lunch time. Okay, I was just looking at the number of hundreds that Pujara has got. It's 17. Yep. He's equal to someone who's sitting right in front of uh, yeah. me. Would you like to welcome him in the 17 Test 100 Club? Yeah, uh, welcome him. I'm sure that uh, hopefully he gets a, a, his 18th 100 uh, next innings, maybe at SCG. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because he's got a lot of cricket left in him. You know, and he's batting at a position at number three where he can score a lot more hundreds for Team India. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that whenever he can, he will score a hundred. The team will invariably be in a formidable position and the opposition bowlers will be very, very tired. Yeah. <laughs> because the number of deliveries he takes, the amount of time he spends at the wicket, it just tires out the opposition bowlers. Yeah, he just loves being on yeah. the crease. You've seen him with that. He gets runs as well but enjoys batting for as long as possible. A true trait of uh, test batsmen. We're getting uh, plenty of questions uh, on Cheteshwar Pujara. We've got one more question coming in on Cheteshwar Pujara. I'll throw that to BVS Lakshman. Parag wants to know, what are the changes that Pujara brought into his game in order to counter line in this series. I think it's using the feet mm. because we know that Pujara doesn't play the sweep shot. He always plays from the crease. Very seldom mm. did he use uh, his feet to Nathan Lyon when uh, Australia toured India. Mm. Uh, and and, he, and he always looks for an opportunity to score on the back foot whether through the cover point region or the pull shot or the through the uh, mid off and cover region. But what we have seen in this uh, test series right from the first test at Adelaide is is stepping out intentionally, uh, but not premeditatedly against uh, uh, Nathan Lyon. You know, it's not only to play the shot or uh, uh, you know uh, affluent uh, cover drive or off drive or on drive, mm -hmm. but also to negate the spin uh, which Nathan Lyon can get from the good length area. So I think that's a pre-planned uh, strategy from Pujara, and he's been successful. He's been very very successful with that. In fact, seeing him, a lot of other Indian batsmen have tried to do that. Okay, we are talking about uh, Cheteshwar Pujara and uh, his partner today was uh his captain Virat Kohli. The two of them love to play with each other. If you take a look at uh, just 2018, most runs scored by a pair and that is Kohli and Pujara. In 14 innings, they've got 704 runs at an average of 50. Kohli Rahane average more than that but then the total number of runs between Kohli and Pujara is 704. We believe uh, we've got Brad back online. Brad, uh, I mean, just looking at this partnership, I know it's still early days in this particular test match, but could that be the match-defining partnership, Pujara and Kohli? Yeah, definitely. I think that, uh, you know, since Pujara stepped out onto the Adelaide Oval and played the way he did was an amazing feat. Uh, it looks like he's done a lot of work in the off-season to try and make sure that he's successful, you know, outside of India. And we know how good Virat is at adapting. And look, I'm not surprising that, you know, they just got the ability to just dominate attacks Virat has anyway and Pujara's got that you know canny knack of just wearing the, the opposition down so look I'm not surprising their techniques are as good as any in the world and uh, you know they dominate most teams in world cricket. All right, let's now talk about Australia's fielding. You didn't give them too many points for that. <laughs> yeah. And when I say fielding, I'm talking about poor catching, but can happen to the best of yeah, teams. Absolutely. You know, no one uh, intentionally drops mm -hmm. catches. Mm -hmm. 
uh, but it's also surprising, you know, because some of them were easy catches, you know, and at this level you try to take as many catches which comes your way. Mm. Uh, so a little surprising, keeping in mind that how good Australia have always been mm. uh, uh, in the field. Mm. All right, uh, Brad, uh, your thoughts? You you want to please with the catching of the Australian team? Do you think those catches? I mean, we were talking about Nathan Lyon that one particular over, two catches dropped. The game could have been very different had they been taken. No, I don't think the game would have been different. I think that, you know, we expect such a high standard from Australian cricketers in their fielding. But look, it can happen. They've been out in the field for a long time. Peter Siddle just came on. You know, hasn't been fielded a ball for two days. And, uh, you know, that's the way cricket goes. But I don't think that it would have affected the, the, the outcome of the game. India very much pushing on to a large total. And, and that's the way, you know, it's still got a deep batting lineup. So they're always going to achieve the target that they wanted. Okay, we're getting back to the pitch now. That's going to be a topic of debate going yes. into the three days that are remaining in this particular test match. Uh, you know, we spoke about how when we started this test match, it was a green track, but it's not playing anything like the track one expected it to. Yeah, and I think uh, all the batsmen mm -hmm. uh, will definitely keep in mind that there is a lot of uneven bounce. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and disadvantage for the batsmen along with uneven bounce, the slowness of the wicket. And that's why the short pitch delivery will be very, very effective. You know, and as a batsman, you always have to be positive in the way you're playing the short pitch delivery. Uh, you always look to play a shot, and the last resort should be to leave the ball. You know, and if you're leaving the ball, it's very important to keep your eyes on the ball. You know, and we saw Vihari, we saw uh, even today Harris getting hit. You know, where they're, they're not, fo uh, you know, having their eyes or focusing on the ball till the last moment. It's going to be a challenging wicket, you know, and, I, and the spinners also will come into play as the yeah. uh, match goes on. So it's going to be challenging to score runs, uh -huh. uh, and and uh, I think from from the bowling point of view, you have to just be disciplined. You know, you have to bowl in areas where the batsmen will be uncomfortable, and that area is at the top of off stump, uh -huh. off and middle line. And also the length should be good length. You can't bowl over pitch uh, deliveries on this wicket. Okay, we've got a uh, couple more questions coming in uh, on our social media feed. We've got one on Facebook, Chetan. Vivias, is this pitch more suited to Indian bowlers? I think so. Yeah, we spoke you know, about we this. We spoke yeah. about this and I definitely feel that it's suited uh, for the uh, Indian fast bowlers. And the good thing is all the three fast bowlers are in good rhythm. They're consistently clocking more than 140 kilometers per hour and the length of all the three fast bowlers is by default what's the ideal length uh, on this uh, wicket you know because neither Shami, uh, Bumrah or Ishan Sharma are swing bowlers where they try to pitch the ball up uh, like like a Bhuvneshwar Kumar mm -hmm. all three are hit the, hit the deck kind of bowlers mm -hmm. and uh, the pace uh, at which they bowl will uh, pose a lot of trouble uh, to the Australian batsmen we've already seen in the eight overs the seven overs with uh, the fast yeah. bowlers bowl I think every ball, it looked as if you'll get a wicket, you know. So it's going to be a tough challenge for the Australian batsmen. Mm. Interesting, uh, Brad, we talk about the pitch. If uh, you were to give one advice to Aaron Finch, would you tell him to have extra padding on those gloves? Because we've already seen the variable bounce on this track. Well, you just got to play forward. You just got to play every ball on its merit. You know that uh, the wicket's going to wear and tear, and I'd rather be in India's place than I would the Australian batsman. Mm. It's going to be hard work for them, but uh, you've got to trust the pace and bounce of the wicket and just play every ball on its merit. So for him, I'd, I'd be trying to get those pads out of the way and just play straight. You know the Indian bowling lineup's going to attack your stumps, and uh, you've got to make sure that you can get access from your bat to the ball. So, uh, you know, you, it's going to be tough for the batters, there's no doubt. but. Fingers crossed they can do well. Alright, I believe Brad has to go. But before we do that, plenty of questions for you. So, you've got to stay on. But before that, we'll have our special segment. It's called the Fab Four. The four players that VVS Lakshman and Brad Ott picked at the start of day two of the Melbourne Test Match. Let's start with VVS Lakshman. I know both of them would have got plenty of points as far as Rohit Sharma is concerned. Uh, he got those 63 runs. And there is 166 points is what VVS Lakshman got. Uh, you had a slight lead compared to Brad Hodge. Let's see how Brad has done. Uh, he's had to go for another commentary assignment, but we'll take a look at his score nonetheless. And I'm guessing, ah, he's leading He's now. leading. 205 yeah. points. I thought he left because he was trailing, but he is leading. That's all down to Stark then bringing us those wickets uh, towards the end of the inning. Okay, let's quickly take a look at the leaderboard. We already know that Brad Hodge is leading at the moment uh, with 343 points to VVS's 291, but we're not even halfway through this test match. Plenty of time for you to catch up. We'll take a few viewers' questions, but uh, before I do that, 
Virat Kohli, towards right at the end of that inning, when the Indian team were walking yeah. off, was holding his back. That is dangerous for him. Yeah, that's not good news. Yeah. And I'm worried about his back because mm -hmm. this is not the first time it's flayed up. It did during the uh, England series. I still yeah. remember uh, the Lord's Test match. He was not fit to take the field. Mm -hmm. You know, because you don't want Virat Kohli, especially the captain and the premier batsman, mm -hmm. to miss out on, on matches. You know, so that's something which I'm sure Patrick Farad will say. A very uh, recognized physio and and very good at uh, his work okay. will take care of it you know because the indian team cannot afford to lose virat kohli uh, and allow that uh, back to flare up again okay we're getting uh, plenty of questions now some of them seem to agree with you i'm just going through the comments uh, who are saying that india missed a trick by mm. uh, batting too slowly some feel that they should have declared earlier but then there are those who also feel that no this was the right time to declare there are certain rohit sharma fans who believe no india should have uh, batted longer okay so talking about rohit sharma we've got another question coming in on rohit sharma this is from facebook in hindsight would hardik pandya have been better pick than Rohit Sharma for this test match. Uh, we've got Brad back, do we? Okay, we don't have Brad back. Vivian? Yeah, I think uh, uh, I still feel uh, more than Ardik, uh, an extra spinner in hindsight. You know, in hindsight, I think an extra spinner would have been more uh, useful mm -hmm. uh, than Ardik because you already got three fast bowlers and yeah. then you got uh, uh, Jereja. Mm -hmm. uh, but having said that, uh, you know the weak link of the Indian uh, team so far has been the batting. You know because it overly dependent on three batsmen, which was Virat, Pujara, and uh, Ajinkya Rahane. I think that's why they strengthened the batting lineup, and that's why Rohit Sharma was drafted in uh, at number six, and Vihari was asked to open along with Mayank. You know, so I, I don't think that it was a bad ploy before the start of uh, uh, the match. You know, the way the match uh, unfolded so far, you always can have different opinions. You know, yeah. seeing the kind of wicket. The match is happening on, but I think at the start of the match, this was the right combination for Team India. But as they say, hindsight is always 2020 vision, <laughs> so you can say that right now. Maybe two spinners, uh, for all you know, could have helped India on this track. Uh, we're getting a few more questions. We'll have those questions up for VVS Lakshman. Savio Roy wants to know Is Bumrah the best fast bowler in the world right now? Yeah, Savio, I totally agree with you. He is the best fast bowler, and it's just phenomenal uh, to see his progress. And I still remember 2016 when he came just a day before the last ODI at Sydney. Huh. You know, when India was touring Australia, India were, uh, were already lost the series. Yeah. And the way he came, bowled well, picked up some important wickets, that two of uh, Steve Smith. Yeah. Uh, and then since then, not only has established as the best white ball uh, bowler, but the way he's evolved as test match uh, bowler. You know, and, he, and it's really surprising that he just made a test debut yeah. at the start of the year. And suddenly, like we talk about Virat Kohli in the batting department, yeah. we talk about Jasprit Bumrah in the bowling department. And it's been yeah. sensational uh, to see uh, in progress uh, in Test match cricket because I had my own doubts about his fitness because of uh, you know the unconventional bowling action he has. Yeah. But I think the workload uh, has been handled well, and also the amount of work he's put in. Uh, uh, as far as his fitness is concerned, is showing. Okay, I think I have the question of the day here. This is on YouTube. Uh, Kanish Jory wants to know because you made a point about uh, Rishabh Pant probably could have been a little more aggressive in his batting. His question is Do you think Pant was playing like that to get more runs simply because he's now been excluded out of the ODI team? Well, it should not be, hmm. you know, and that's where the team management and the selection committee should be very clear with their communication. Hmm. What's the reason of Pant not being there in the ODI or the T20 side? Hmm. Uh, but uh, having said that, uh, we discussed even the last test match or yeah. uh, right from the start of the series that the team management has given him license to go out and play his style of batting, you know, hmm. that is fearless approach, which is uh, what is the strength of Rishabh Pant. And this situation, hmm. the situation Team India w was before them taking the third new ball mm. was where he could have gone and expressed himself, especially against a part-timer like Aaron Finch, mm. who's a left-arm spinner, and also Nathan Lyon. But I didn't see that intent from him, you know. But especially keeping in mind that Indian team was looking to declare and okay. at least bowl, you know, seven or eight overs uh, tonight. You know, so I, I just felt that he, he didn't uh, show that intent. But I don't think that this, the reason behind that is is ODI. Omission. Okay, you don't think like that. No. Okay, interesting question there. We're getting more questions now uh, uh, from YouTube as well as uh, Facebook, and this one is again for BVS Lakshman uh, by Arun. 
is pujara the new vvs lakshman i think pujara is pujara <laughs> <laughs> because i think he's getting to bat in number 3 and he's performing right. consistently which is right. so uh, important for uh, right. team india you know right. so i think it's 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 not right to compare him with anyone else is right. uh, doing a great job for team india and he's become now the mr consistent in overseas uh conditions as well mm. well indian fans love to compare i i've heard fans compare him to rahul dravid now yeah. to vvs lakshman people have even compared him to navjot singh siddhu because of the way he walks and his walking <laughs> style so there are plenty of i don't know what pujara will be thinking of that comparison <laughs> i know i'd love to ask uh, cheteshwar pujara who would he like to be compared with but he's always said that rahul dravid has yeah. been his yeah. idol he's modeled his uh, batting on rahul dravid okay another question we'll take another question coming in uh, this one again for vvs uh, forma wants to know should bowlers aim only the stump line when the bounce is and even something that you answer yes yeah. i i think that's the right uh, line to bowl you know because yeah. the more number of deliveries uh, are targeted at the stumps the more opportunities will you get uh, to pick up wickets you know and also the field has to be uh set in such a manner where you are having the right fielders in catching position mm -hmm. if the ball is swinging then i can understand uh, the the field which which we you can have a lot of slips but on this wicket i think once the ball gets to 15 overs 20 okay. overs the ball will not swing so the stump line is the most effective uh, line and dangerous line because of the uneven bounce Okay time now to bring you a feature on our show this is Undiscover Australia brought to you by Tourism Australia if you're wondering where did Brad Hodge disappear well then he's gone with Shibani he is exploring the National Sports Museum at the MCG I'm at the National Sports Museum at the MCG and Brad Hodge is my tour guide for the day This is the National Sports Museum. And there's some pretty cool stuff in here. All sporting codes: football, cricket, tennis, um, cycling, athletics. There is a section from cricket. If you come down here, let's check it out. What Imagine, is that? So they're your batting gloves. What? So that's what you actually have to use. So, and the type of bats that you used to use. And that's the ball. crazy. Well, look at the ball. So, yeah. Why is amazing. that? So, that looks huge. Yep. So that's where it sort of started, and that's where it sort of progressed. Right. So and the same with the bats. So that's how the first bat started, and that's what it's become today. Look at yeah, that yeah. first bat. That is brilliant. Yeah. Look, Australian Cricket Hall of Fame. Yep. That's who's in there. Oh, Gilly. Gilly's there. Warney from Border. Yep. Where's, Warn where's Warney? Warney's there. Oh, there he is. Hayden Ponting. So there's some, you know, there's some younger younger generations. Oh, I, I, I haven't quite quite made it yet. Um, Next time we come out here, you'll be up there. Um, yeah, you know, I'm pretty sure my nomination's coming soon. Yeah. You know, me and Steve Wall are pretty much on par. Check out the Don. This was me in my former life. <laughs> <laughs> Legendary. The great Don Bradman's uh, baggy green cap. That's pretty important. I would have thought. It'd be worth a fair bit of money too. Steal it, take it, and sell it. So here's all the blazers from every country: Australia, England, South Africa, West Indies, New Zealand, and probably the most important one for the summer India. is India. So, so Sachin, yeah. Kapil Dev, and Sunil Gavaskar. Yep. So that's the hats or blazer. This um, is a Slogger classic bat. It's Neil Gavaskar. Yeah, <laughs> and that's pretty funny because he actually never slogged the ball. He was just a superstar batsman, one of the best opening batsmen for India for sure. There's the World Cup trophy. What year was this? 2003. Here we go. Yeah, I'm up there somewhere. Three, nine, four. Oh, there yeah. we go. Did you know the number? Yep. Should have been three, eight, nine. But Mark Clark is my spot. Oh, hello. Hi. No kicking, Brad. And that's how it's done, people. Well, if you thought that the MCG was only fun when there's a game on, think again. Tomorrow, I'm off to see the cutest penguins ever. What a 
place uh, MCG, one of the most iconic grounds across the globe. You've played so many times there. Have you ever gotten a chance to go to the museum? Never ever. Never. I regret because there's unbelievable memorabilia there. Uh, never ever got. You know, you're so engrossed with the. Uh, competition or the matches you're going to play. So I didn't get a chance to actually visit the, the museum. Mm, maybe next time you're there as a broadcaster or maybe oh, on just a on a vacation. Uh, on a I vacation. love going to Australia, uh. my favorite place, uh, uh, Sydney and Melbourne. So next uh. time when I'm on a vacation, probably visit okay. the museum. Lovely. Time now to pick your four players for tomorrow. Bumrah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, Bumrah, uh, Ishan Sharma, mm. uh, 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 Kwaja. Uh. And uh, uh, Shami. Okay, those are the four picks for VVS Lakshman. Based on those picks, you can expect the Indian bowlers to do rather well on day three of that test match. As far as Brad's picks are concerned, he's going to email them to us. So we're not going to let him get away. Then we'll compare how the two have played on day three. So join us for what promises to be another exciting day of test cricket. You're watching ESPN Cricket Info Match Day, brought to you by Maruti Suzuki. Mm -hmm.